All right, here we go. This is the start of our Sable playthrough. It works. Love the aesthetic already. Little bug. Oh, that's a big face. One second, just got to take out some more of the trash here. Oh, I didn't put an underscore. Lord Almighty. Man. Moss. So it did say All right. Uh, I'm supposed to use the mouse to turn. They need to sensitivity is real low. Maybe it's because I have a controller plugged in. It just seems pretty low here. Maybe that's just by design. Okay. enough of what I'm supposed to be doing here. Is there a... I don't have any clothing, inventory. I should head back to camp. Okay. <laughs> I should head back to camp. Okay, let's do that. I assume that's camp over there. All right, this, these controls do feel a little bit better with the controller, so.
It's the Ibex Camp. I can feel JD, Johnny, smiling behind her mask, just as I know she can feel the teeth bearing little grimace behind my I'm nervous, and she's softly, sweetly amused in her eyes. I probably have very little to worry about. You know you have nothing to worry about, don't you, Sable? I tell Diddy that I know, but it hasn't quite sunk in yet. She chuckles. The Chick Jr., thank you for the host, buddy boy. I promise you, Sable, you're fine. But I do know how you are. You're going to be nervous until you've started, and then you'll act like you've been doing it your whole life. Remember the first time you rode a bike? You wouldn't even let me put you on the seat. You were so afraid your hands were like paws gripping onto me. Feel the memory in my fingers. Then I promised you it was going to be all right. I told you how much I have loved riding my bike as a young woman, and how much, when, how wonderful the wind felt through the fabric. Suddenly there you were. You sat down, you leaned forward, you put those little grasping claws on the handles, and you were off. I remember thinking just watching you tear over the sand. Look at her. She can do whatever she wants. She reaches out and places a hand on the edge of my mask, and you can't see them. Take a breath. <sighs> Take I'm ready. I thank JD for the encouragement and tell her with a nod that I think I'm ready. I know you are, so let's get you started. You need to talk to Hilal and Driss. Driss should already have made the arrangements for your bike. Halal will share something, let's say, as useful as it is fun, hmm? I think I might suspect what JD's saying, but I stay quiet. After that, I suppose we'll see you off. if I choose the wrong path. I asked Jay what will become of me if I choose the wrong path. There are no wrong paths, Sazel. Sable or right ones. I'll be glad if you choose to stay with the Abexi. But truth be told, I'll be glad no matter what, so long as you're happy. Mm -hmm. Whatever you decide, you do so with my blessings. Don't try using me as an excuse to come home early, eh? She knows me. I'll go speak with Halal. I'll be there to see you off. And speak to Driss as well. I've told him to arrange your bike with Sizo, but you know how he is. I have something to give you. A compass to help you on your journey. It's the same one I used on my gliding. An artifact, you might say. I take the device in my palm. It fits naturally there. Perfectly weighted and crafted. Each component slides together with incredible satisfying precision. Thank you. Go on, go on. It's nearly time. Yeah, butter boy. Oh, was I for Loch Halal? I give an enthusiastic wave. I've always appreciated Halal's verve and vigor on it on a day like this. I'm ready to match it. The touch of nerves for Ben. Sable, take this. Halal hands me a small round stone. As it nestles into my palm, I feel a warmth not borrowed from Halal's hands. Emanating from within, I run my thumb over it and find it softly electric, like static on cloth. I try to sound less confused than I am, but I ask Halal what this thing, what this thing, what this is. Oh, Sable, you can't leave without it. What I've just given you is a gliding stone. What do you feel? I tell Halal that I feel... Electricity? Then you're doing it right. What you feel in that stone is openness. 
I look at the stone. It seems quite closed. Guardian stones are vessels for the perpetual. They suck up its power like little sponges and hold it there for you to channel. Right now it's empty or dormant and waiting for you to fill it up. How do I do it? Take it to the temple ruins at the edge of the canyon. You'll be able to activate it there. Hello claps their hands twice and bobs a little. They appreciate their good mood at a time like this. Come back to me once that's done. I want to hear all about it. As I'm about to leave, uh, leave Halal stops me. But you haven't gotten your bike yet, have you? It's a bit of a trek to the temple, so go see Driss. He was meant to get that ready for you, yes? I remember JD's words now, and I tell Halal, I'll go and see Driss. How do I get to my quests? That. All right. There's the bike guy down there. Whoa. I've told myself not to be too eager. It's all I can do not to race up to Driss. Driss is the camp manager. He's been difficult to get a hold of lately, but now I strongly suspect that he's been working on my bike in secret. Perhaps it's extra beautiful or has some custom feature. What will its name be, I wonder? How fast will it go? Will my legs feel sore? Or will I get used to it? Driss turns with a bit of a start. Sable, uh, hello. Hello, how are you today? I'm well. I let it hang there for a moment, but I can't do it. I'm too keen on the words to fill out. I asked her if he might sort of possibly maybe have a bike for me. Or a bike. He yells it like it's an idea he's just had. Your bike, yes, of course. Yes. Your bike. That I was meant to, that I prepared for you, because today is your gliding, yes. Driss nods along with me. Yes, of course, right. Yes, yes, I do have that. My blood runs cold. Has he forgotten? By which I mean I arranged it for you, and I will. It's sort of a tutorial for you. Oh. How convenient. Yes, exactly, a learning experience. You see, Sable, before one can own their own bike, they must prove they can ride a bike by taking a test ride on a different bike. I think about it and find I've never heard of that part of the gliding, but Driss does seem earnest. So instead of worrying about your bike, I'd like you to try this bike as a test. Driss gestures to the sand cutter at his side. It's quite old and a little shabby. A tester, if I've ever seen one. I'll give it a go. Really? I mean, yes. Good. Be gentle, though. The sand, sand cutter is older than JD. We treat her with respect. Now ride the bike through the ring and back. Here's some advice for you, my young glider. Don't fall off. All right, chat, here we go. Handles okay. Whoops. Ah, 
I return to Driss, who somehow manages to seem caught off guard despite knowing I was coming. Sable, congratulations. How was your first pre-glide ride? Any strange rattles? Unexpected hissing? Unexplained hissing? Small fires? What do you mean fires? Surely you'd notice if you were on fire, even a little bit. Is that a possibility? Well, obviously it didn't happen, so I think we're fine. Is this bike dangerous? He doesn't finish. Have you already been by Hilal? Borrow it to run your little errands. And Halal's got something to show you too. Huh? Help you out with more of that or mobility you're after. My confidence in this exercise only likely tarnished. I thank Driss very much for his help and his bike, and I depart for Hilal. Okay, so. Do I have to go talk to Halal again, or just go do the Whispering Stone thing? Oh, we'll go talk. Jesus. Okay, so yeah, go to the temple. Temple was this way, I think, right? This looks like ruins for a temple. sat down. It's not like Breath of the Wild or Genshin where you can like jump up.
This looks important. Seems like the sort of place I need to be. The stone thrums like the beat of a heart as I approach the altar. I think it feels right. I'm ready for Rohana to know me. I'm ready to know myself. Do you feel her curiosity in this sacred I know I am in her sight. Allow the activities. Nice. I got to be careful. Not to use my Genshin controls because I want to tap it twice instead of just pressing and holding. Hmm, can I get out here? Where am I going? Somebody else. Somewhere else. Maybe? If that was the way in. Was I supposed to glide up there? ladder.
there. There you go. What is this? Boing. I should be careful. Turn to Halal, it's clear they know what I've just experienced. They're excited on my behalf. In a way that makes me miss them before I've even left. Isn't it incredible? How does it feel? Safe, like a warm hug. I tell Halal that I feel almost embraced by the bridge. Warm and safe in my own little bubble. They swoon. Oh, that's such a nice way of describing it. Allah's mood doesn't darken, but they sigh. But the sigh they let out holds a bit of sorrow. You're very lucky, you know. I miss it so much, that feeling of just floating on the breeze. I need to just do something real quick. Chef friends. Sure, there's no other haw spots trying to follow me. Heads. Yeah, this is what are we doing? Time. I suppose it's best that it fades with age. Else, I might have never come back from my gliding. I'd just be out there heaving myself into chasms. I'll heave myself into chasms for you. I tell Halal that I'll throw myself into a thousand chasms on their behalf, and they giggle. One second. Nicely did. There we go. That's what I like to hear. I know people manage to keep it up, but I don't know that I've got the time to practice as much as they do. It takes a really serious focus. Halal laughs, even if there's a bit of regret in it. And I certainly haven't got that. Let's 
Still, I suppose the gliding wouldn't mean much if it were all gains and no loss. Hmm? I think about that, but decide that there's already too much loss on my mind to consider it much further. I am saying goodbye to my clan, my family, my home, my child. To lose the perpetual is a sacrifice for another time. You're going to love it out there, Sable, even when you don't. I advise, try to have fun. There's a lot to be said about ritual and independence and all of that out there, but the world's an easier place if you put joy first. That's a good, that's a good way to look at it. Thank Halal for their advice and for their help, and tell them I'll miss them. It'll be over before you know it. A warning and a reassurance, all in one. I say goodbye to Halal. Before I go, Halal gestures to the tower. It seems Sizo wishes to see me before I leave the clan. Alright, whoa! Who's this? What's the top? Oh, it's JD again. Hello, little glider. It's so strange getting caught. I tell JD how strange it is being called glider instead of sable or even clan child. Just trying to get you used to it. She seems to really like it, and maybe I like it too, my little glider. Where's... oh, who's this? What's up? As she looks out across the landscape, Zeki's shoulders sag a little. I wonder what she's thinking about. Zeki's voice is weakly incredulous. I don't know how she's done it. That's Alaria over there. I follow her gaze to a little speck in the distance, which I now understand is her daughter, Alaria. Uh-oh. To get her back, Zeki shakes her head. No, she's fine, and I'll get her. I'm just parenting. I suppose I'll know more about that when I'm old. Yeah, you will. I completely understand this poor, poor person's point of view right there. It was my son that hosted me earlier. He's put me through near enough of that stuff. Sorry if you get dizzy, chat. Sizo is an outclanner to the Abexi, but I've known her for nearly as long as I can recall, and I think of her more as a kind of distant relation than any sort of outsider. Machinists, I'm told, are given their posts, and by their training and their code must go to where they're needed, but Sizo has been among us for so long that it's easy to forget it's an assignment first and foremost. As far as any of us are concerned, she is one of us. I think there's a perception among the other clans that the Avexi are insular quite insular, or that our designation of Avexi versus Outclanners suggests some nervous othering of those who are unlike us. But in practice, such things are more the result of our nomadic nature. We seek to know who will travel with us, and who we must leave behind, but all are welcome to join. And I'm always pleased that Sizo did. Sable, how do you do, clan child? I can only think of one thing. Sizzo has a throaty quality to her voice and it rumbles through her mask when she laughs. She's quite a serious person when uh, most days and I am always torn between pride and alarm when I manage to make her chuckle. Yes, JD told me how excited you were. She also told me Driss would be coming along to get your bike together, but I think he may have... I knew it. What? 
I hadn't meant to say it out loud, so I tell her I was just clearing my throat. I don't begrudge Driss's forgetfulness. Were I tasked with so many odds and ends, I might be just scattered. And besides, this will be good for you. I want you to scavenge the hover bike parts yourself. I'm going to make my own hover bike? No, you're not going to make your hover bike. You're going to build your own hover bike. What's the difference? To make suggests you're creating something, but your bike already exists. You simply haven't taken it more yet. Here, take this. This is a navigator. You can use it to mark waypoints on your compass. It should be useful in finding the old parts. He asks is where I might start looking. Our bikes are reborn in the ruined ships and fragments spread apart. A good start would be the ship down there near the camp. Find another up on that great rock near the other side of the canyon. And another behind the old dam on the hill. Use your navigator to mark that down if you need. You'll need to, to gather a control panel, a power supply, and a calibrator. Do most gliders make their own bikes? I ask as if most gliders really make their own bikes. Only the lucky ones. Tells Sizzo I'll see her off soon and head off in search of the components. Together we will create something new out of the old. So right bumper is the navigator. Alright, so I don't know, we'll figure it out later. It was over there somewhere. dam first. I did say behind the dam. I be messing with this? Is this, is this safe for uh, for me to play with here? 
Alright, now how do I get over there? Jump on the top of there, maybe? Maybe I'll make it? Yeah, maybe that'll do it. Yeah, easy peasy lemon squeezy. I assume that's the ship I need to salvage. This looks like something I need to put in here. Let's open a door. Excellent. That looks like a puzzle. Come back to it. Oh, don't need to. So that's the atomic control panel. I can get out right over here. Other thing I marked is this way, so let's get to it. Let's, let's try not to bounce ourselves too hard. Just passing through. Yeah. Horde out of the way. <laughs> yeah. There we go. There's nothing of use to be found in the ship, but I noticed a blinking light flashing on the dashboard of the Push the button. A voice crackles from the machinery in front of me. It sounds like a recording, barely audible. Stop messing about with those buttons, you absolute idiot. Sorry, Brahmin. Concentrate. I don't think we... I have to remind you how much work it was to get this far. We're almost there. Alright, let's see if that old machinist told us holds up. If not, they'll be held to pay. Hear the sound of mechanical adjustments being made. Three buttons being pressed, perhaps. Okay, when I push this push this orange thing, pull that lever hard. Yes, sir. The sound of a click and a loud grunt before a snapping sound. Oh, on Rohana's mask, not that hard. You've torn it out. Suddenly the speakers are filled with static and a low rumble that gradually increases in pitch. And then the sounds of someone cheering. It worked, we're flying. More cheering. Is that the sound of someone dancing? Okay, okay, let's focus. 
thing is moving fast. We need to slow it down a bit. How do we do that? Let me check the machinist notes. A long pause, the rumbling static that sound. Rumbling static sound that started playing when the ship took off is still increasing in pitch. Coming. Lever Toma, the one you ripped out. We're going too fast. We're going to crash. We need to try to. The recording comes off. Saima, are you looking for a calibrator? I am immediately on guard. Saima has always been a mischief maker and taken tremendous pleasure in tormenting me. In theory, I am older, more experienced, and should be more than able to withstand it. In practice, you won't find it here. I've hidden it. You'll never find it. Never, never. She never fails to get to me. May I please have it? I decide to be gentle and I ask her, may I please have it? May I please have it? She mimics me terribly, all high and screechy. Despite my best efforts, I see it. Oh well, too bad. Maybe you'll find it on your own, but I don't think so. Sima laughs off my irritation, but I'm not going to give her the satisfaction. I cross my arms and try to effect a change. I'll give you the calibrator. I put out my hand, proud of myself for standing tall before Simon. Give me some beetles. That's a fair trade, isn't it? Something you want for something I want. I try to decide if it's more mature to push her over and steal the calibrator or to acquiesce. Then I simply stifle a sigh and shake her little hand. Perhaps some of the adults in the camp know where I can find some. Let's go to the camp and see what's up. Nobody in here, right? Ready, kid, she just hauled her back to her mother, father. Listen. I could ask about catching beetles for that awful little Saima. There's a nest of beetles just east of here. You can't walk up to one and just catch it, though. There's some seeds growing on the rocks around the nest. Drop a seed on the floor and the beetle will start eating it. Then you can sneak up and grab it. That seems like a lot of work. Allow quotes from a selection of obscure and lyrically mediocre effectsy historical ballads whenever I pass by. There is a great verse that says much about our folk buried under sand. Blah, 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 blah. You assume it's pointing me this way? It's 
Wrong button. Yeah, again, still wrong. Is it up high? Or is it behind this? I don't know if it's up high or if it's this thing. Let's see. Can I do anything here? No. So maybe it's up there. I, think I have enough juice to climb up there. It seems like I need to get up there somehow. Oh, here we go. to get up here. There we go. That or I'm overthinking it. That looks like it's probably a beetle over there. So I think I was overthinking it. They're in here. Okay. Where's the seeds, though? I'm talking about. Oh, I probably could have just walked in here. I wonder if it's these... What is this?
Two. So, my bike is right there. Cave underneath the camp. Yeah. There she is. One second, chat. Just gonna check something. Oh, I just had an ad break, didn't I? Pardon me. We didn't miss anything important. Singly vindicated as I hand Simon the Beatles, but rather than gloat, she hands me the calibrator and begins to cry. What have I done? You're leaving, you're leaving, and you'll never come back. She blows her nose and then wipes her hand on her tunic. Yara never came back after the last gliding. Aren't you sad? You were her friend. I'm not feeling the tough love. She might visit again someday. Tell Simon that Yara will likely visit one day, just as I will if I should ever, if ever sh I should choose another clan. But how will you find us? We'll have moved a million times by then. I offer that I will always find the see no matter what. Please don't go. Tell Simon not to worry, and then I will be back sooner than she knows. And I'm sure she pounces behind the mask. And I add that if I am not back sooner than she knows, then she will be ready for her gliding by then. She can come bother me herself. Promise? I say yes. Good. Then I suppose I can come see you all. I thank her and say goodbye for now. Get my bicycle. I leave it here. We talk to this fella real quick. Umar is a man of few words, and he's nothing if not consistent.
So there's one like up there. Well, I'll use one for a spin. All right. Yeah, there's no way I can get up here easily. Stop turning my view. Just steer. Maybe I'm meant to go up through here. Probably not supposed to work like that, but I'll take it. <laughs> Almost had something there. feels like a possibility. Especially since gliding doesn't seem to take any stamina. Run out for this one though. all I need. Oh, is this where I started? My little journey? This is nice. <laughs> Give me one second.
here. Hey, lady. Hello, nice lady. Okay. So, that was obviously not exactly where I needed to go. It's at South Camp. This way. Was that the great rock there? Looks like a pretty great rock, yeah? That or it's that really tall guy over there. is not going to be easily climbable. Oh. Oh, this is a over here, I think. This is probably it. Maybe. I love the little sound when the bike shuts down. Got it. This is feeling right. So the trick, is there something up there? Let me check up there before I go down. Yeah, see, almost did it. That's just money. It's only money. Yeah, I feel like it's gotta be over here. Gotta be over here. Ah. 
Where's my bag? Just float it. Maybe my bike will work a little better than, uh, than the other one. Maybe just a little bit. I meant to do that. All right, Cizo is Tawa. My bike. I return to Sizo with the parts, and it's as she waves me over that I feel a pang of sadness in my chest. When will I see her again? Once I'm gone. Well done, Sable. Yes, this is everything we need. Are you ready to assemble a bike of your own? I'm ready. Then let us head to the workshop. Nice. Scissor relaxes in the workshop. It isn't that she's particularly rigid or anxious ordinarily, but there's a certain calm beauty that, on, that one only truly appreciates when Sizu is in her element. I wonder if it's this way for all machinists. You must understand, Sable, is that the components you acquired, they fit together not by chance, not by effort, by nature. They belong to her. They have always belonged to her. All we are doing is assembling her from what she has already been. I nod and I feel a soft buzzing in my ears. Among my clan, we believe that machines have names. Held for ages like deep secrets, unheard by those unequipped to listen. We'll find this one's name together. Assemble the machine. Lighting bike booster. <laughs> Lighting bike front. And the wings. This look a lot nicer than that other one. Listen. Let's 
Sizzle tilts her head a moment, leaning closer to Simoon. All at once I know the hover bike's name. Simoon, I say it in a whisper to let Sizzle know. Simoon, Simoon. Well done, Sable. What does it mean? You should ask her yourself. Sizu looks entirely serious. The bike, to my enduring surprise, says nothing, even when I lean close. I tell Simone that I am eager to know her better, and Sizu looks quite proudly at the both of us. You are ready then for the gliding. May the gods, may all the gods turn their faces from you, Sable. An odd blessing, perhaps, but Sizu is prone to such things, and I can read in her tone that it was meant quite sweetly. You must learn to listen to Simone to care for her. Seek out my fellow machinists in your travels. Sable, they will teach you the art of machine whispering. Oh, and here, take this. It's a machinist badge. You'll need plenty of my ilk on your gliding. Show them your worth, and they'll give you more badges. They thank Twizzo Sizzo twice for good measure and give a bow. I am ready. I should speak to JD about the final gliding ceremony. Logging in. Hello, Sable. Unread messages. Zero. Probably get quests or something from there. Sable, that cartographer landed his balloon while you were away. You should go speak to him. See if you can't get a map. I nod and begin to go, but JD... Yes, Jerry's. Alexa, turn on the computer desk light. Okay. Using that, JD gestures me back and puts something in my hand. Here's some money to get you going on your journey. Use it most wisely, and then a little unwisely when the mood strikes. I like it. It's good to know the value of money, but you never want to be ruled by it. I thank JD effusively and head out on my way. All right, bud, where are you? Not what I meant to do. I assume that's him there. I approach the cartographer. Ah, greetings, child. I saw you looking longingly at my great balloon. Quite a piece of work, isn't she? She really is. I nod enthusiastically. It really is an impressive vessel. However nervous I get imagining being up there all alone. I wonder if anyone's ever fallen off one. Probably best not to worry about that. Best not to ask right now. Well, good to meet you. And no, I should introduce myself. I'm Jordan. I tell him I'm Sable. Suppose if you've come all this way to see me, it's probably a map you're after, eh, Sable? Of course you would. That'll be 50 cuts. I'll buy that map. I thank Jurgen for the UR map and all its vast possibilities. Something about this makes it feel more real. The book on your gliding sable, I still remember mine. I ask how it was. Short. I knew since I was a boy that cartography was for me, but I spent a little extra time out there just to enjoy the world. Speaking of, keep an eye on the skies, eh? 
plenty of my colleagues out there, and they'll have more maps to sell you, from Hakoa to the Soda Waste. I thank Jordan for the tip, and say goodbye. Farewell, child. The balloon was more fun than the person in it. <laughs> okay, so. Quests. Anything left? Just the ceremony. Laser Beam, thank you for the follow, by the way. I turned the follow alerts off because of the, uh, you know, the ha spots. So I didn't have a, I don't know that I had a pop-up, but thank you. I returned to JD with a new lightness, and it makes the weight of my departure feel heavier still. What a strange day. Sable, is that a badge you've got there? Sizzo gave it to me. I tell JD that Sizzo gave me the badge. Then you must have earned it. Well done. I give a bow of thanks. Well, Sable, if you keep this up, you'll be headed for the Mask Caster in no time. I try to think about going to a Mask Caster, but it seems impossibly far away. Imagine choosing what I want to be. Imagine choosing what I want to be forever. I know what you're thinking, but don't worry about it. You'll get plenty of badges when you're out there, and once you've got three alike, you can trade it in for that mask. Don't feel like your first mask is your final choice. The gliding is about freedom and exploration. I suggest you claim as many masks as you wish. Only at your final ceremony will be asked to choose one. How will I choose one? You'll have to feel it out. When you know, you'll know. No, you know, right? When you know, when you know. Now. Tone of her now puts the butterflies back in my stomach. With all of this done, there is only one thing left. It's time then. Time to walk through the face door at the Temple of Rohana. There, you'll assemble your gliding mask and go. There are things I wish to convey to JD here. Love and gratitude, and fear and worry and hope, and though I find myself unable to speak any of it in words, I know she understands. Before you leave, child, I made you these. They are dyed with the traditional Abexi maroon, and I hope provide you great comfort out in the desert. When you leave today, you will no longer be Sable Clan Child of the Abexi. You will simply Sable and the rest will come. No matter what you are, no matter where your journey takes you, I will always know you. I will always love you. I need to. screenshot of that one. I love the writing in this game. It's very good. And I will see you again. I don't know where my journey will end, but I know where it must begin, and I am ready. Give them a bite. Oh, wait. Are you soon?
I assume maybe I get that glider when I get... So I'm gonna go, yeah, because this is still the one that points to, so... It's alright, it's okay. But I'm not walking over there, so I'm gonna take this one. I wonder if I'm supposed to go, maybe I'm supposed to go up there. I believe there's a way back up. that up. Right, where are those just steps? Those steps are over here. Where do I get to them? I just get like a do-over? Like, obviously I didn't go the right way in here. You guys just put me back at the beginning. Almost had it. Yeah, I feel like we're getting there. You big dummy. Like that 
that's too high up. Do it here somewhere. Yeah, maybe right here-ish. Jeez, I almost, almost biffed it. Almost biffed it. Okay. A ladder here the whole time. Is uh, is there was there really a ladder here the whole time? Okay, so what else do I need to do in here? Thing. Oh, I bet there's one on that side. Yeah, back there behind. I didn't think to go behind her. What is that? It's just where it rose up out of the ground. This one should be a little easier, maybe? Sounds important. It's important. Have a look here. Turn to camp. No hack 
can wait. I'm not gonna go ahead and put my mask on. Katie's voice that goes strangely through the machine, yet it still warms me. Well, Sable, this is it. By the time you hear this, we will have gone. The gliding is a journey that must begin alone. There's a certain nuance lost in transmission, and for that I am grateful. It would be far too much to hear the cracks in her voice and not run weakly into her arms to stay through. But I am ready, so I close my eyes and listen. Though you go by yourself, you are not without friends, you are not without family, you are not without love. These things you will always carry with you as you do your mask. And I know I'm not supposed to do this, but if I were you, I might go see Utari. They're the machinist at Burnt Oak Station among Sizzle's closest friends. Or is a good contact to have on one's gliding and a fine way to get another mechanist machinist badge if you're so inclined. Only a suggestion, though. As for us, I'll send another message once we return to the Ewer, so keep an eye on the post boxes. And try not to pick at us. She takes a long breath, and I forget that things as easy as breathing could ever exist. World is waiting, Sable. Good luck. This one looks cool. Oh shit, yeah. All right. 
Right, so leave the canyon. Oh, I go through here. It was closed off before. Come to me, show us the way. I'm caught between. Oops. Guessing that's the other station up there. You probably probably can't even hear me, but that's I'm just gonna let the music play because it's lovely. Let's hope I make it. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. I greet the cartographer shyly, a little cowed by how alone we are up here and how intimate it sometimes feels, despite it being so much about of my gliding. She responds with what sounds like a warm smile. Hello there, glider. Thanks for taking all the time to climb all the way up here. Surveying gets a little lonely sometimes, you know? I tell her I do, given how lonely I can get on the sand sometimes. I hope Samoon doesn't hear. So then, what is it you need? Here's what I have. Sand sea map. Cartographer's badge.
All right, so uh, but that's the town up there. I think we'll call it a night once we get there. And we'll play this again soon. Like in this. It's nice and chill. Like this has got to be it, maybe. Anybody home? It is a challenge not to be scrappers through. In a romantic nights. As I look toward my glidings, as a child, I pictured myself as a dust covered traveler, exploring strange forbidden places and finding strange forgotten things, a treasure hunter for old and arcane objects. Although I'm certain the grind of sifting through sand and dirt for useful tools and things left over can wear anyone down, I can't help but weave some thread of my fantasy into the reality of the world. Greetings, glider. The name's Alton. Give a bow and introduce myself as Sable. Find much scrap metal out there, Sable? It's been known to happen. Good, good. Alton leans back and looks up at the ceiling thoughtfully. Got a task for you then if you're up for it. The hesitation in my voice is a product of a gentle intimidation, but I stand up straight and casual. Enough to seem like I'm up for anything. Alton seems to believe it enough. I need scrap, Sable. Got lots of it. And you up there already doing basically nothing. Alton chuckles to himself. That's it, like that. Gliding's odd, eh? You have nothing to do, so you have everything to do. Wonder if anyone's ever spent their gliding just lying around. Well, if that counts as a gliding. I say with a smirk, I don't imagine that would count as a gliding, but at the same time, I wonder if some people do go out use the time to simply be with themselves in a safe and relaxed space. Would it matter as much what mask we chose if we found our purpose deep within? Oh no, should I be doing that? <laughs> Alton clears his throat and I'm grateful to be shaken free. Anyhow, the task. Let's see if you can understand this one. Yeah, it's a bit complex. Tell him I'm ready. Go out, find scrap. Bring it to me. Sort of scrap. All of it. Big scrap, little scrap, medium sized scrap. If it's made of metal and it's too busted up for anything else, I want it. I think you can handle that. Tell them I'm happy for any reason to explore and then I'll return with everything I find. I say goodbye to Alton. That is not a door. So there's definitely stuff up there. So I get up there. Somebody over there. Go we'll talk to him. This is Burnt Oak Station, so that's good. I could probably park my bike here. All right, so you know what? We are going to call it a night. Let's see. Options. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, it was a fun, that's a fun game. Nice and chill, so I think I'm going to definitely be playing a little bit more of that. I want to thank anybody that came and hung out, anybody lurking, got some new follows, even some that weren't bots. 
thank all of you. And we'll see you again next time. Let me see if there's anybody out there able to be rated. We're going to go say hi to Guy. He's playing Phasmophobia with friends. Always a fun time. So, uh, catch you next time. Have a good one.